Uh, it appears I'm very much still alive. I'm afraid so. Why is it, pray tell me, that so many have fallen victim to the end of my blade, and I can't even end my own life? That's a first. Someone trying to kill themselves because of me? I wasn't really trying to off myself. I was only trying to dig this shite piece of metal out of my arm and, well, it blew me skyward. A protective mechanism, no doubt. The relic is temperamental. Sentient, really. Hmm, fantastic. I care not. Where are the others? They've gone off to find a healer in the nearby village. To bring back to you. They couldn't travel with you, so I've been here to watch over you. I don't want you inside me. Is that the truth? Or do you fear that you like having me inside you and you don't want to admit it? Our connection is ageless. One that transcends this earthly realm. It is timeless and pure. Untainted by humanity's grasp. I sit up in bed quickly, agitated, and push away the dizziness. If that's so, do you really think I would have snuck away like a teenage girl in the middle of the night to try and remove it? I... I can't stand this. The thoughts are driving me crazy. I can't stand you. You sneak away in the night all the time. You're an assassin, are you not? He continues after I give him a withering glare. Even I was caught unaware by its might. My thoughts too traveled down a path that was once unsought. But now I cannot deny its pull. I am as trapped as you are. Shall we no longer fight it? I've lived too long to be hampered by what society perceives. Of tradition. Give in to those feelings and be free. Give in to me, Riddle. I would rather die. <laughs> Life, death, they are one in the same. A soul-bound connection cannot be broken by death. We would meet again in our next life. Why torture yourself when you can instead allow me to pleasure you? Let me show you the ways our connection can bring the most joy to your heart, soul, and body. My soul has recognized yours. My fist tightened when another vision assaulted my mind, showing me the life of the one I was now connected to. Zayla was not an actual known god in the Egyptian pantheon, for he had been erased from the tomes of history. He was a powerful and benevolent warrior who had lived centuries ago. He was known for his extraordinary abilities to heal and protect his people from harm. Zayla's father was the ruler of a small kingdom, and Zayla had been his trusted advisor and defender. However, one day, his father's kingdom was attacked by a group of evil sorcerers who sought to destroy it. In a fierce battle, Zayla fought valiantly to protect his father and his people. But as the battle raged on, Zayla's father was gravely injured. In a desperate attempt to save his father, Zayla expended his last remaining magic to heal him. His father was saved, but Zayla, now unable to defend himself, was captured by the evil sorcerers. The sorcerers feared Zayla's power and wanted to prevent him from ever using it against them. They decided to imprison him inside a magical relic that they had created. But just before he was trapped inside the relic, Zaylo found the smallest remnant of magic buried deep within him, charged and swirling from the attack on his father, and he imbued the relic with that magic, creating a powerful soul-bound connection between himself and whoever would one day wear the relic. Over time, the relic became known as the Eye of Osiris, and it was kept hidden away guarded by the priests of Osiris. The priests knew of the powerful connection between the wearer of the relic and the imprisoned Zelo, but they did not know the true nature of the relic's magic. After Eric, Draven, the princess and I retrieved the Eye of Osiris, we had unwittingly broke the connection between Zelo and the relic, freeing him from his imprisonment. Zelo had emerged from the relic, astonished to find himself in a new place and time. I can still feel his astonishment even now. He saw that I had a piece of the relic embedded in me, but he did not feel anger or resentment towards me. Instead, Zelo felt drawn to my inner strength and bravery, and saw a kindred spirit tied by a small thread between us. As Zelo began to speak and ask who had broken him from his imprisonment, 
He had sensed that I was someone who he could trust and work with. Zayla was grateful for his freedom and was determined to repay whoever had set him free. The soul-bound connection between Zayla and myself remained strong and timeless, and Zayla knew that he and the relics were would be bound together for eternity. Ah, get out of my bloody head! You can show me this as often as you like, but it does not mean that I accept it. What is love to you, Riddle? The question caught me off guard, and my anger dissolved into despair. I know not what it is. I have lived a solitary life, one of pain and sorrow. But it is what it is, and it's how I wish to continue. Alone. <laughs> you humans are truly so narrow-minded. Then allow me to show you what you are missing, what you deserve. He stands from the chair across the small room and approaches me slowly. A panther seeking his prey. I have lived many years, many lives. Some I don't remember. Some I do. I have learned uh, some tricks over these long years. Just relax and let me in. Allow me to take over. Give over your control so I can bring you to the farthest heights one will reach. His fingers brush across my arm where the relic is. My dagger instantly presses against his jugular. You test my patience, I ground out. He laughs and swats my dagger away as though it was merely an irritating gnat. <laughs> Stop fighting me, you stubborn fool. What do you feel when I touch you? Here. Humoring him, I give him my best droll look. He's only touching the relic of my forearm, and I allow it out of sheer defiance to show he has no power over me. No hold. No connection. Nothing. Hmm. How about here? He brushes his formidable tan fingers along the relic and up the crevice of my elbow. Irritation. Or here. He moves his hand to brush across my chest, stopping at my heart. I swallow, then bat his hand away, quite forcefully, I might add. He grins and sits back in his chair, a satisfied and defiant look on his face, the look of patience, a knowing look that he has won, that he only has to wait for me to catch up. I prefer women, I say heatedly, looking away. You can prefer neither or both. It is of no concern to me. No one is stopping you. Especially not me. There are no rules here. There are no limits, no walls. Only ones brought upon by your heart. So let me get this straight. If I do not fall to your charms and allow you to ravish and have your way with me, the relic will not reach its full potential, and the world as we know it will cease to exist and crumble beneath the hands of the Templar. Yes. His voice whispers against my mind with its telepathic touch. Unbidden, a shiver runs down the back of my neck, and I stiffen. So hard this iron shell I have built around myself, and only one word has it crashing down. Ah, and besides, why does it matter, any of this? I gesture between the both of us. And speak normally. He smiles, knowing he had gotten to me. Love is everything. It is what drives my power. Love is the most powerful force in the universe. When I used my magic to heal my father from that deadly curse, it was my love for my father that fueled my magic, allowing me to tap into a deep well of power I didn't know I had. I realized then that love could conquer even the darkest magic. That's why in the final moments of the battle with the sorcerers, my magic imbued the relic with the power of love because it knew that only someone who truly loved could harness its power. The relic was not meant to be used for selfish gain or ambition, but only for the greater good. To me, love is the purest form of magic, and it can heal, protect, and bring light to even the darkest places. The relic will not work if we do not come to these terms. Mm, terms? I did not sign a contract. It's not real. These feelings. Only parasitic thoughts brought upon by the relic. 
<laughs> so you admit to having feelings. Feelings of pushing you through that window behind you. <laughs> he lifts an eyebrow, his muscles relaxing, flexing, and twitching with every slight move. Hmm, a challenge. Come at me. I'm not stopping you. I size him up. While rather large, I could end him. Eventually. <sighs> Look, while I do enjoy a good sparring session... Even though this witty repartee between us I find quite humorous, I'd rather get straight to the point. I never entertained the idea of falling for a male. Never thought of it, actually. Not until you. You changed everything. You are beyond gender. My soul has sought yours for thousands of years, and it is relieved to have finally found its mate. I know the same can be said of you. The relic knows you better than you know yourself. I stare at the brute, my eyes piercing into his, and then I stand. Not showing any sign of intimidation, I stop and stand before him. So you think you know me? I know you'll give in sooner or later. He leans in close, his devilish grin spreading across his face. Hopefully for my and for your sake, sooner rather than later. His ominous azure blue wings made of shadow spread out behind him, a deadly and impressive show of strength and force. Pleasure shouldn't wait for anyone, not even a stubborn assassin. I do not drop his gaze. I'm down for a challenge. He stares at me hard, promises hidden in his eyes. He knows my answer runs twofold. Rather, the challenge I'm willing to accept is in favor of his wants and wishes, or in opposition. Two can play this game. I grin. Eric clears his throat beside me, suddenly in the doorway. <clears throat> is this a bad time? Then Draven barrels through the creaky wooden door. Oh, it's bloody hot out there! And the mosquitoes are out from my sweet arse! Oh, what's that big guy doing out in full-out god mode? Finally relinquishing my gaze from Zaylon, promises held in my stare that we had not yet finished, I turned to the Scottish idiot. I do not need a healer. Look, as much as we love you, Riddle, we brought him to examine the relic in both your and the princess's arms, you pretentious git. I would never have allowed the princess to touch it knowing that it would bring harm to her, or now make her an even bigger target for the Templar. They now need her to use its power. They will stop at nothing to have her. And you. Eric stares at the princess who shyly hides behind the door, not daring to enter this small one-room cabin with four large males inside. Eric steps into the doorframe and ushers her inside, pulling her into the shelter of his arms, her back to his chest. He's right. They will enslave her. Use her until all hope is drained from her until only an empty shell remains. I know the feeling well. For I had been kidnapped and enslaved as a child with my younger sister until my teens. Until the Brotherhood found me. I cannot allow this to happen to the Princess. I already owe her for wounding her so callously. Then we will split up. The Templar cannot use the relic if both pieces are spread to opposite sides of the Earth. No. Zaylor speaks up then. We are stronger together. We are unstoppable. If you want to remove this threat of the Templar, then I say let's turn the tide towards them. Stop running. They'll not know what hit them. Of course, certain things must align on Riddle and our side of the equation for us to reach our full power. But we have time, and I am very patient. And... persistent. The baddest upturn of a cocky grin forms at the corner of his mouth. I'm very possibly the only one who notices. My eyes narrow. Challenge accepted.